Hello everybody. In this week's video, we're gonna take a look at this Lenovo motherboard. I purchased this from eBay, it was listed as faulty. So as you can see, this person is using price tags to label this. So this is an i5-7200U, no power. And we've also got another sticker here that says ThinkPad i3 faulty. So I'm gonna scan this into the screen. We're gonna see if we can get a schematic and try and fix this. And this is my scan of the motherboard. Now, I carried out a quick visual inspection and I couldn't see anything that looked like it was damaged. So we're going to go straight to the DC input section here. This is the DC input connector on the motherboard. Now, as I mentioned, I don't have an adapter for this. So I'm going to bring power to this motherboard with my DC power supply. So let me show you how I set that up. Now, the first thing we need to work out is where to inject power. On our DC in connector, we have five pins, one, two, three, four, and five. If we look at pins one and two, we can see that they're connected together. It then follows a track onto a fuse. On the other side of the fuse, it comes onto two inductors and then onto a MOSFET. So this looks very much like our DC in right here. Pin three is not connected to either or any of these other pins, it's on its own. So this may be some sort of ID pin. And I have double checked with my multimeter, pins four and five are connected to ground. And now that we've identified where we need to inject, let me show you how I set that up. So I introduce my DC power supply. I connect my black wire to a ground. I connect my red wire to pin one where we identified that our DC in comes in. And I set my voltage to 20 volts, which is standard for these Lenovo's. When I did that, it immediately started drawing 11 milliamps. Without a schematic for this motherboard, it was quite difficult to follow the DC in path. So what I decided to do was to jump straight to the battery management IC and take some measurements there. So let me show you where I found that. On the other side of the motherboard, I found this IC, I9237HRZ. Now I recognize this from a previous laptop that we worked on. This is the battery management IC. However, if I didn't recognize it, how would I know which of the ICs on this motherboard was the battery management IC? Well, very easily you can search online and you will find ISL 9237 and what you'll see is Book Boost Narrow Voltage DC Battery Charger. So we're going to mark in the pins on that IC so we know what each of them does. And I have a schematic of a typical application. So what pins do we need to check? Well, first of all, we have established that we're injecting 20 volts into this. So we should be measuring VADP, which is our voltage adapter voltage coming in here. A good place to measure that is on either the current sense resistor or the pins that connect to that. And what do we need to measure on the output? Well, there's a VSYS that's generated by this IC that's sent down to all of our secondary circuits. And we need to measure this and confirm that we have the correct voltage. So with my multimeter in volts DC in the 20 volt range, I placed my black probe to ground and started very carefully taking measurements around this IC. And these are the values that I measured. So first of all, at the current sense resistor on the input, we can measure that here at CSIN or CSIP, and I found that we had our 20 volts there. So the 20 volts that I'm injecting is making it through the input MOSFETs and to our battery management IC. Next, I measured our VSYS, which I mentioned earlier, is the important power rail that's sent down to all of our secondary circuits. And when I measured here, I found 13.06 volts. So that looks good also. On a couple of the other pins, I also measured 5 volts on VDP. At AS gate, I measured 9.29 volts. On DC in, I measured 19.35 volts. And on ACOK pin 24, I measured 3.37 volts. So it looks like everything is okay up to this point. So since we've established that there does not appear to be a short on the input section or on the main power rail of this laptop, and we have our VSYS main power rail stable and online at 13.06 voltage, the next step is to try and power it on and see what happens. As you can see, I've connected my DC power supply up to my motherboard. I've switched it on and it's now drawing 11 milliamps, which is in around where it should be, given that the laptop has power, but is not yet powered on. So I'm gonna press the power button here, which is on the other side of the motherboard. And as you can hear it click, and immediately it starts drawing 400 milliamps. Oh, there's blue light on the screen. 
and it's immediately gone back to standby again. But we're still drawing 400 milliamps. Okay, and that's gone back to 11 milliamps. Just one quick note on this. You'll notice in that previous section of video, I had the DC power supply set to 19.50 volts because I had been previously working on a Dell. I changed the voltage to 20 volts, which is the correct voltage for this Lenovo motherboard. And it also did the same thing. So what we have here is once again, a power on but no display symptom. So what should we check next? Well, what we need to check next is all of our secondary power rails. We know that we have 13.06 volts going down to all of those secondary power rails, but that doesn't guarantee that they are all switching on and producing the correct voltages. So let's check them one by one at each of the inductors. So with my laptop connected to power, I pressed the power button to power it on and I noted down the following measurements. On this inductor here, we measured 1.82 volts. I presume that's for the chipset. Again, I don't have a schematic, so we're gonna to have to guess what all these voltages are for. This measured 13.06 volts, which is the VSYS power rail. These three inductors here, this one, this one, and this one, all measured one volt. So I presume they're for the CPU. This inductor here measured 1.2 volts. I think that is what the RAM takes. This inductor here measured 2.50 volts. What on the board could possibly be using 2.50 volts? Well, actually nothing. This is on the main battery power rail. So because I don't have a battery disconnected, it's not at the correct voltage, it's at 2.50 volts. I didn't actually get a battery with this laptop motherboard. So moving across, we can see on this inductor, we have 0.0, .0 volts. I'm not gonna say that's wrong, right now i think it may be an extra power source for the cpu if it's drawing a high amount of current and um, next we have this inductor here which is our 3.3 .3 volts power rail we also have our 5 volts power rail here and the last inductor we have 1.50 volts i'm not sure what that's for is that for the hard drive possibly maybe put down in the comments if you know any more I also checked the voltages on the wind bond ICs, including the main BIOS. I found that they were all getting the correct input voltage of 3.27 volts. The BIOS battery, which is this battery right here, I measured as 2.95 volts, so that's close enough to 3 volts. I also did the usual trick of disconnecting the battery, pressing and holding the power button, connecting it again, but that didn't make any difference. Next, I decided to disconnect from power and check the diode mode readings at all of those secondary inductors. I'm particularly curious here about the inductor that measured 0.0, .0 volts when powered on. Like I said, I'm not convinced that that's indicative of a fault, but I, I want to take the diode mode readings anyway. So here are the values that I measured. Now, as you can see here, there is nothing really that looks wrong. Even on that one inductor that was measuring 0.0, .0 volts when we powered the laptop on, the diode mode reading is the same as the other inductors near the CPU. So there is no indication of trouble with the diode mode readings on those secondary inductors. So what do we know at this point? Well, we know that our input section is good. We're producing our correct VSYS voltage. We know that our secondary power rails are producing the correct secondary voltages. We know that the laptop is appearing to power on when we press the power button, but it's not showing anything on the screen. I've tried disconnecting the BIOS battery, pressing and holding the power button and reconnecting it again. That hasn't done anything. I've tried it with different memory and I've checked around the board to make sure that there are no signs of damage. So what do we need to focus on next? Well, the next step I think is to focus on this IC right here. This is our main BIOS IC. It's a Winbond 25Q128FVSQ. So I'm gonna try and see if I can find a ROM file for this on bad caps or somewhere else. See if we can flash it and see if that makes any difference. Okay, so I'm recording this a few hours later. I have tried multiple different BIOS files that I found on the usual free online forums, but none of them has managed to improve my situation. No matter which of the BIOS files I downloaded and programmed this IC with, I'm still getting a power on, but no display situation. Am I looking at the wrong thing here? 
Does this look like a bias fault to you? Please post down in the comments below. I am also conscious that there are other wind bond ICs on this board that require programming. Am I better off trying to program one or two of those as well? Post any suggestions in the comments below. I'm going to keep working on this and if I have any update, I'll post it on the channel. Please like and subscribe if you like what I do and I'll see you again next week.